you are watching the biggest, the largest, the highest, the greatest, the tallest, the toughest, the mightiest African spiritual platform. We are Revelations, and I am your anointing host. What is my name? Plenty of names. I'm Queen Hadasha. Call me Empress Makida. I am the spear of destiny. Call me Hawa. I am Mami Grace. De Duyaku, one of a kind. I welcome you, my beautiful subscribers and viewers. You make this platform the biggest, the largest. We are one of a kind. Send an air dedic on our platform. We are consciousness family individual of us is called the pearls because this is where wisdom and knowledge is this best i welcome you um today we have one of our brothers because he's black like me and you mr sedo boko 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 yes, boko. yes. i on set who is going to uh, teach us about esoteric christianity that's a huge uh, topic uh, this is like abominable to talk about uh, uh, to the people who are supposed to benefit from this. But I don't know where he's coming from. He said that is what he wants to talk about. So let's welcome him and see how it goes today. Always love, always love, always love, love and hate, hate. That's one of our, our slogans. And if it's not true... Come and tell us the truth. I welcome you. Let's welcome our guest for today. Papa, we welcome you to the biggest platform. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here. Piao. Okay, so uh, today is your first time. This is my first so time. So kindly introduce yourself to the public. Tell them who you are, whether you are the devil, whether you are Satan, Behemoth, Laviathan, Muhammad, Jesus, Moses, Eli whatever you are, Krishna, Buddha. Tell us, in, on this platform, we are ready to receive anything. In fact, the serpent that went into the Garden of Eden is if you welcome here. So introduce yourself to us. Tell us what you are and who you are and why you are here. Thank you once again. Mm. And uh, let me say I'm much pleased to be here on set. Uh, this is one program that has appealed to me for the past one year. Uh, I came across it during my search uh, over the net. And I said, this is very informative. It will broaden up the understanding of people about spirituality, which is given for spiritism. And I said, well, why don't I apply and see whether I'll be given an opportunity uh, to also talk about what I have a bit of idea. And I was given quick attention. That surprised me. The manner in which you received me. I thought it would take a very long process, but very fast. Just a picture, what you want to talk about, and you are fixed. So I've been fixed, I'm here. As I said, my name is Simon, or Sedo Boko, and I'll be talking about esoteric Christianity. Most often we know of popular Christianity, what we call esoteric Christianity. It is good because esoteric Christianity builds on esoteric Christianity. The difference here is that most often esoteric is not heard of because people consider it as secret, hidden. But it is from the hidden that we have the real thing emerging. So I am here to talk about esoteric Christianity and to bring us some aspects of scriptures which are not commonly taught. It will benefit everybody. But I'm not going to impose anything on you. Yours is to listen. See what you can pick and leave the rest. If you cannot pick anything at all, no problem. But what I will be pleased about is one day you will say, hey, I've heard it somewhere before. That is enough. That is enough. We welcome you to the platform, the platform of uh, platforms, the mother of all spiritual platforms. Uh, you can jump into the ocean. Uh, we are we, and we are the world. I welcome you. So um, let us know who you are. The knowledge you are coming to share with us here, what is your um, source? Okay. For over 30 years, I have been asking myself questions about the purpose of life. Why are we on earth? What are we required to do? Where do we go from here? And I've done a lot of research. And indeed, I've come across very interesting things about life. 
And that is exactly what I want to share with you. Okay, so your, your, your knowledge today is based on research. Ma yes, and basically from the teachings of Rosicrucian Fellowship. I mention it again, Rosicrucian Fellowship. Rosicrucianists? No. I need to be very clear again. Say again. Because people might not have heard of the name before. There are many societies that go by the name Rosicrucian. It's just a word that represents rose cross. And every Christian should know the meaning of rose cross. But where I do my study is Rosicrucian Fellowship. It is different from all other organizations. That is where my teachings are coming from. OK, that's fine. You said something that um, Rosicrucian, every Christian must understand that word. Rose cross. Rose cross. Yes. Why do you say so? Yes, I said so because the rose stands for purity. Purity and the cross, we know. It goes beyond just the wood, as holy as it is on which our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified. It talks about the spirit that is embedded, that is imprisoned in this body. Explain. We are spirits in this flesh. Every human being on earth is a spirit in this flesh. But it is a young spirit that is supposed to be perfect. So the process of perfection is what we see. The spirit has put on bodies. The last of the bodies is this physical body we see. Eventually, the spirit will have to free itself from this body. That is what I mean. Hmm. OK, so um, you said a lot that you started learning about it and you realized that everything is in us. And then you wanted to know why we are here as humans, yes. right? What we are doing here. Yes. And give me five vital things you got to know when you decided to find out. I've mentioned one, mm -hmm. which is that we are spirits living in this flesh. Mm -hmm. We have come into this body and this physical form in order to do a job a precise job, and that job is to unfold our latent spiritual powers so that we can go back to God. We were with God. The spirit was with God. And when it came out of God, it traveled this journey, as I have depicted here. Mm -hmm. You will go through that. Yes. We just want to know yes. five things yes. that you got to know yes. when you started making your research that you think people are not even looking there or okay. recognizing it or okay. not even talking about. Just five before we get into okay. your topic. One, as I said, is one that is what you've said. we, we are, are spirits, spirits uh -huh. in flesh. Uh -huh. The second one is that this physical F, the, the body which we roll on, which we do everything, the planet F is also a spirit. Third, we have specific job to do. We have a purpose of life. Which is? Which is to go back to God in perfection. OK. The fourth one is that in the journey of the spirit, it deviated, which brought about what is normally called sin. And that ought to be corrected. Mm -hmm. That is what we are doing now. And then the fifth one, I should mention it, more or less, everybody will be saved. Whether everybody will be saved yes. in words. Everybody. Yes. You mean everybody? Yes. How? Uh, what I mean by it is that if you look at the classification of hell, and you look at the classification of heaven, part of God can never be destroyed. God will never do that to himself. There is a saving plan for everybody, but we must take that opportunity and be saved. Saving plan for everybody. But we have to take that opportunity. My last question, what are these saving plans for everybody? And how do we take that opportunity? When the spirit was making its journey to its last point, which is this F, and it lost its spiritual consciousness. That was the deviation. It lost the spiritual consciousness for material consciousness. It's like when you sleep. You are not aware of your surroundings. But when you wake up, 
you become aware of your surroundings. It's the same thing with the spirit. So since it deviated by doing that which it was not supposed to do, our Lord Jesus Christ came to restore and bring the spirit back to its original position. So what we need to do is to listen to what the good books say. That is important. We need to expand our consciousness. We need to know so that we can do. Our failure to know what to do will endanger us. So we must love. That is what our Lord Jesus Christ brought. That is number one. But not love in the sense of selfishness. You love somebody because you expect the person to love you back. That is improper love. It is, it is too ordinary. Mm. You love somebody for the sake of the spirit in that person because we are all from one source. So we do good. We do good to our fellow human beings and even beyond animals and all that. We do good not to be praised. Mm. We do good not because we want to enjoy it. We do good because it is good to do good. We are all one, so we need to support each other. Importantly, we must know that there is a God. We did not make ourselves. Even how we breathe, who knows? How we sleep, who knows? There is a power behind everything. And that power we must seek first. Which is that? Which is God. Which, as God, which God? I'll explain. I know there has been a lot of talk about God. Mm -hmm. There are different levels of God. There is a creator, as was said in Genesis, the first chapter. Let us make man in our own image. The word itself, let us, shows that there are others. So we have gods at different levels. We have God of our solar system. We Can have, you mention five? We want to get into yes, your Yes, that topic. is how I've just started. Uh -huh. We have God of the solar system. Mm -hmm. And that God of the solar system is a trinity. Okay. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Mm. In them, we live, we move, and have our being. Then we have God of this earth planet. There is. And every race has its own God. Mm. Every race, call it black, call it white, call it whatever. There is a God for that. Every ethnic group, every family, and even the individual, you have your God. So we have God at different levels. It depends on the meaning you want to adduce to God. So who, who is your God? Oh, your, your my God. And who is your own God? My God is not different from others. The first aspect of it is the God above. When we say the God above, we are not talking about the sky. We are talking about the creator within whom we all live. But within me is also the lower aspect of that creator. Uh, so we want to know, you've, you've explained that yes. every fraternity group, ethnics, they have their God. So your own, where, where, who is you? Which one is your own? We want to know your own. Don't talk about people's own, your own. What is his name? How do you know this is your own? Uh, Make us understand. Okay, when we talk about God in me, that is the Christ in me. It doesn't have any other name. But the Christ in me. Okay, so you said uh, uh, you, uh, people have their uh, ethnic groups, and so what? Which ethnic group do you belong to? I'm an Ewe. You are an Ewe. So yes. Ewe's God is the Jesus. Is that what? No, you're no, saying? no, 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 no. I've never make said me that. make us understand. I'll make you to understand okay. it. Maybe when I go to this place, uh, I'll make you it better. You explain that. When the Spirit was coming down from the world of God to the seven worlds to this last physical world, it needed support because the Spirit itself cannot do everything. It needed support. So we had archangels, we had angels, we have, uh, you may call them elementals, and other spirits that supported the spirit to its level as it is now. But the spirit in us, more or less, is higher than, excuse me to say, the elementals, because they haven't even taken embodiment yet. Hmm. But they are there to support us. And we are not supposed to be bowing to them. We are supposed to know that we are God's ourselves. We must know and work with creation. But because we do not have that knowledge, we are aspiring to have that knowledge. That is why it is like that. Every person has a guardian angel, but when you develop yourself to a certain point, the guardian angel withdraws. It is the same thing with the family, God. 
If you develop yourself to a certain level, it also withdraws. It goes on to the tribal or the ethnic one, all the way to the racial one. So we want to know you, right now, which God is with you? Has your ethnic group God deserted because you've groomed yourself and gotten into another level to become uh, Jesus? We will take your time. We want to know about only you. Only you. Me as an individual, as I mentioned already, mm -hmm. and as a Christian, it is the Christ in me who is my God. So what, what's, what's the name of your church? I'm a, uh, a Catholic. You were Catholic. Yes. You still go to Catholic. Uh, once a while I do. So go. what is the name of the fraternity you said you get all Rose your knowledge? Christian Fellowship. Are you part of them? Yes, I am. So where do you stand? What is their no, God? What is no. their own God? No, let, let us not say so. You see, when you say so, it's like the question is not hitting it right. What I'm trying to say is that mm -hmm. when you are mentioning God, you are talking about more or less an outside entity. But we are talking about the one within you which you need to unfold. So that's what I'm asking. You are a Catholic. Yes. Okay. You just said that even when you groom yourself to a, a level, yes. you go beyond all these deities in your homes and all that. You understand me? I agree with you. So I want to know, is Jesus the ultimate? If yes, um, um, what is the God that is in the Catholic and the God that is in the where you get your knowledge from? Is it the same God? That's all we need to know. So how, what, uh, how do you groom yourself? To, is Jesus the ultimate? I want to know that so no. I put my question right. Yes. When you mention Jesus, he is my mentor. Jesus is my mentor. But we need to be very clear about Jesus and Christ. These are two separate. Explain. But yes, I will explain. That's why I say I'm here to talk about esoteric. So when you 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 take that two to the board, right? Uh, I just no, no, wanted to know. I want to explain. Uh, who is your so. God now? I want to know because you are Catholic, and Jesus is not your God, but your mentor. Yes, my mentor. It you is. see, that's why I want you to make this thing straight for yes, us. Yes, that's why I also want to explain. And now. how you, the God, where you are getting your knowledge from. Yeah. Is Jesus also their God or just their mentor? Or he's not there at all? If he's not there at all, I want to know the difference between which gods. If it's one God that is ruling where you got your knowledge from and the, where your, 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 your fraternity, the Catholic Church, we just want to know the two. And I also want to know if Jesus is the ultimate uh, God. So when you, uh, uh, you groom yourself and you go beyond all these deities, archangels, they are, da, 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 da. is Jesus the ultimate you would have to hate or there is another one beyond Jesus? That's what I want to know. Jesus do. came and showed us the way to the Christ. Jesus has never said he's God. You Who said you were a Christian. I'm still a Christian. And you go to Catholic. I'm a Catholic. You so but, how do we balance but this? Jesus has never said he's God. It is never so. Anybody who says so, maybe the person has to go back and do his work. Christ is the second aspect of God. And Christ is different from Jesus. And people need to know these things clearly. That Jesus of Nazareth is a human being like us. But Christ has never been and will never be. Yes, because that is the second aspect of the Godhead. So where is he? He is the head of the archangels. So where is he, the Christ? The Christ, as I speak right now, is the one who controls our planet in its orbit. So where is he? Christ is spirit. And the physical body cannot see that which is spirit. So where it's is he? He is still with us. Where? When we drink water, an aspect of him is in there. Okay, he is in the when universe. He, he covers everything. Without him, we have no life. Okay, that's the Christ. Yes. By Jesus, he did. No, but I need to explain it. Please By please. Jesus became the Christ. Jesus hmm. became Asimbe the Christ. Kweni. That is why we say Jesus Christ. How did he become the Christ? Yes, Jesus purified his body so much that when this earth planet was bound for destruction, there has to be a call for it to be saved again. The earth planet was bound for destruction because of our evil ways, the evil ways of humanity. 
So the Christ spirit came down and took the body of Jesus of Nazareth. But Jesus of Nazareth is not an ordinary human being like you and I. He has the purest body. At the point of baptism, that is when the Christ spirit took over the body of Jesus of Nazareth. So, is so Jesus, Jesus God? of Nazareth, Jesus is not God. Right now you are saying that Christ yes. is, let's say, the second command of the creator. The second Am aspect of the creator. The second aspect of yes. the creator. Yes. And Jesus became Christ. Yes. And you are saying he's not God. How do we balance this? Now, when you are talking about God, you are talking about divinity. And as I mentioned already, Jesus of Nazareth is or belongs to the human family. He is not an angel. He is not an archangel. And Christ is the head of archangels. That's a different powerful line. So when Christ says, without him, we cannot get through to God, it is a fact. It is a fact. But Jesus, being the human being as he is, hasn't reached that level. He is not the head of the archangels. Christ is the head of the archangels. Let me also say that people say Christ, well, it is a title. Uh, it is an anointing. Well, ordinarily, that is what esoteric Christian would say, the popular Christianity and its explanation. But if you go deeper, you will see that Christ is not just a title or an anointing. So Christ, the second aspect of divinity, is God, but not Jesus. He has never said so. But so you said Jesus had a different body. Am I correct? What I said was that He's not that ordinary body like us. No, Jesus. Jesus is, is the perfect body humanity could ever produce. So apart from Jesus, his speciality and different body that he came to this world with, has any being come to this world like him? Well, I will not be judgmental here. Unless you mention the being that you have on your mind. No, who tell us if come. anybody like... But I know uh -huh. that we have other religions mm -hmm. who also have, or that also have their leaders, who are also very advanced people. Today we are in your knowledge. Exactly. We are in your experience. Exactly. We are in your level of education or level of knowledge I agree with and you. when you tap you free yeah, exactly. you get me exactly. so answer this from your own point of view you said jesus uh jesus yes or, or with different body he said different being uh, uh, than us so i want to know don't talk about people's belief you are teaching us today had in your knowledge and in your research is there any being from a body and fitting as ye debesi or no Jesus Nankasasu, Dibesi and de me ma migrate me teha any wo uh Mr. Sedo Oteha no. Has any been body a different like him or powerful like his body has ever been on this surface of earth? That's the question. All right, I've heard you well now. Mm -hmm. Indeed, the body of Jesus Christ is the holiest. And personally speaking. I do not foresee any other human being in that position. Mm -hmm. Why do I say so? Every human being has four bodies. We may see the last one, but there are other ones. Christ never belonged to our human race, so he never had a physical body. The second body, which is the spiritual body, Christ never used it before. Are you talking about Christ or Jesus? We I are, want to link it. Okay. I'm answering to okay, that. Okay, go, go ahead. That second body, Christ never used it. But the third body, Christ ever used it. Which is? Uh, we call it the desire body, which is also linked to the desire body of the earth. When we sleep, we go there, except we are not conscious. Now, Jesus purified his physical body, purified the second body, so that it will be in tune with the third body of Christ. So in terms of perfecting the body, no human being has ever done it except Jesus of Nazareth. That's what I'm asking for. Opamabu aname, mamento unjung. Opamabu anawe nyana, ayen kase ne hubon, upam uchushe ya wenye ntiyo, my dear. Me see, se wan kai miye nsun, wabe kai miye asri, mi grace. Eh, utan yoten hun, look at all this, I don't know whether I should call it confusion or what. 
me, I want to understand these things. Yes. You tell me you were a Christian, you look for knowledge. I am a Christian. No you way. look for knowledge from here. You were a Christian, you were a Catholic. Yes, I'm just a Catholic. Mm, I'm not saying you are not. <laughs> I'm just repeating what you are telling me. All right, me. I've heard you. And this is where you get your knowledge from. We will go through it when you are done. I don't want to eat much of to your time because yes. the topic is huge. It's huge. So when you are done and I feel some of the questions is left, platform we so your topic is obi bisa said your topic ni treaty esoteric christianity another a serious topic or see obi treaty or your Christian or your Catholic, na or you use or social knowledge is free. Eh, where? Rosicrucian fellowship. And or how no social knowledge is free. When your knowledge is free, ni Jesus, no or how no call you. But better him till we can't judge. Eh, we love love and hate hate. We love everybody. Everybody you. I had the yenye yim obia is welcome. And that's what I love about your program. <laughs> so, Papa, your topic is esoteric Christianity. So, then, they did come to Akwa, but maybe in Akwa, but let's get into his topic. So, please take us through. Okay, um, I need to give a background, and the background relates to one, the type of people we have, the classes of people we have, even in religious circles. There are always classes of people in the world, and even in religions. We are all not at the same level. So no single teaching will satisfy everybody. If we look at the Jews or the Israelites, and we talk about the tabernacle in the wilderness, the classes of people who approach the tabernacle can be looked at in terms of three. One, the ordinary people who bring sacrifices. Second, the priests. And the third, the high priest. Automatically, you realize that the teaching for the masses will be different from the teachings for the priest. And the teachings of the priest will be different from that of the high priest. Now, if you look at humanity in general, there are two classes of people when it comes to the matter of religion or spirituality. One set is more dominated by faith. They believe, and they don't want to think about it anymore. They just believe. The other class is driven more by the intellect. They will not act unless they are convinced mentally that what they are going to do ought to be done. These two groups of people, you cannot just bring one single teaching and it will satisfy all of them. Mm -hmm. More, more particularly, for those who are interested in astrology, you see that humanity under the influence of pieces, which we are, we are right now. Pieces has a certain character, or has some characteristics. Submissiveness, to be docile. You do without complaint. Hmm. That is the character. You take things based on faith and belief. You don't ask questions, and you respect authority. These are some of the characteristics of pieces. But when you look at the next age we are going to, which is Aquarius, Aquarius is more based on intellectuality. The use of the mind hmm. is based on initiative and creativity. And more importantly, it is scientific. So you see that somebody who is science-based somebody who is knowledge based that person will not be much interested in any faith based teaching hmm. there has to be a teaching that will satisfy that person as well so both the mentally driven person and the faith driven person who have to blend you see our lord jesus christ mentioned to us told us that we need to be as wise as the serpent and also as humble as what Yes, you know it already. So it means we need to blend both the mind and the heart. So we cannot ignore any. And then there is also a third aspect. The third aspect relates to the purpose of life. Why are we on earth? If you listen to the religious talk about it, or may I say 
orthodox Christianity or esoteric Christianity. We were created by God and we are here to worship God. You do well, you go to heaven. You don't do well, you go to hell just for a single lifetime. But when you go to the esoteric, the one who seeks more of explanation to hidden truths, he says, no, worship is good, but we are spirits on a journey to become perfect. So we are here to improve upon our spiritual bodies so that we can become like the creator. Eventually, we are supposed to create living things using the word as God did. So if you look at these two classes as well, no single teaching will appeal to them. There has to be a way out, a convergence, so that indeed they can move and move as required. And more importantly, if you look at scientific discoveries, not only today, but in the past, you realize that some of the findings of science challenged orthodox thinking. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that science can relate better to Christianity? And that is what esoteric Christianity teaches. It teaches you how these scientific discoveries are not really a wonder. For instance, the talk nowadays of extraterrestrial beings, that there are other beings in other places. It is not a surprise. Those who have read about these things know them that indeed they exist. They know that some time ago in the past, indeed beings from Venus and Mercury came here to help humanity. There are the good ones and there are mm, the not so good ones. The not so good ones are the ones who disobey the cosmic laws, the laws laid down by God. So indeed, teachings differ and they are at various levels. The problem now is if you become fanatic to your teaching, thinking that what you know now is the end of it all, that is a big mistake. The quality of the spirit in its journey towards perfection is adaptability. Hmm. Everybody needs to adapt. If you glue yourself to one position and that ends it, it is dangerous because you are not in the mind of God. Mm -hmm. You don't know what changes God is introducing. Mm. So we need to be observant, we need to be knowledgeable, and we need to be practical as well. So in terms of esoteric Christianity, there are things in the Bible that ordinary word-to-word -word explanation can never make sense out of. Some, you give examples. I will give examples. Mm -hmm. Even when we go to the creation story, the very opening chapters in terms of Genesis, you read that the one, God said, let there be light. And indeed, there was light. Hmm. It was only on day four that the sun was created. And we know that the light is from the where? Sun. The sun. So which light is being referred to on day one? Hmm. That is a big challenge. And then the issue of the fall of man itself, the Garden of Eden, these are things that when interpreted word to word will not make any sense it eventually. They won't balance. They will never balance. You are right. Mm. Because uh, if I could go here, it would be fine. Go ahead, anything. It's your time. When the spirit began its journey from the world of God, it came from, uh, it's within God. It is not outside of God. It went through series of phases. And this is what I have drawn over here. It went through th the first stage, the second stage, the third stage, and it's now at the fourth stage. Uh, those who know of Iri, I-N-R-I, in the Bible, to when our Lord Jesus, the cross. Yes, Anytime you see cross, yes, you see it. the elements all started from here. Now, when the spirit was coming down, we call it involution. It was coming down, but it never had outside consciousness. Its consciousness 
was like a dream state. But when it got to the fourth stage, something happened here. And that is what is captured in uh, and described as the Garden of Eden. It was not a physical location, but it was in the etheric world. The etheric world emanates the physical things that we see. The, the, the physical, all physical things that we see, the vitality that gave birth to them is the ethers. In the same ethers, when I speak now and you hear it, it is carried by the ethers. If you talk about internet, it is carried by the ethers. It is the same thing with humanity. Our human body, there is a second aspect of which, which we call the vital body, the ethers. Now, this ethers, the etheric body, when humanity was living in it, that is the Garden of Eden spoken to. It was never a physical thing. Even though... So Garden of Eden was not a physical thing. It was place. never a physical thing. But physical things were used mm. to represent it. Mm. Because if to this demonstrate is, it. Yes, exactly. So mm. that at least we can have a sense of appreciation Understanding. of what really happened there. Because mm. even when you talk about ethers at this level, how many people know about ethers? So some depiction has to be made in terms of stories, in terms of allegories, in terms of symbols, so that at least we can have some appreciation of it. Mm. But the Garden of, Ether, uh, of Eden is actually the ethers. And our consciousness fell into the physical things. That is where we mixed the track. Because we decided to follow Lucifer's spirits rather than listening to the voice of God. And that is what brought about the physical consciousness. Now we have reached the bottom, or we call it the nadir of materiality. Our journey now is to go back to the Godhead. When we were in God, we had what we call all consciousness. The consciousness of God is within us. But as we were coming down, we were losing the consciousness one after the other. And over here, when we turn the consciousness into the material world, we finally lost it. We lost it by deception from the Lucifer spirits. They had to do their job. They were also doing their job because they are part of the economy of God. They had to do it, and they did it. So when it was that... <laughs> God also has economy. <laughs> <laughs> so when this was done, Aye. we fell. Now, our Lord Jesus Christ came to restore us back so that we can go back to God. But when we are going back to God, we are going with two very important things. One is self-consciousness. No more just all consciousness, as we did here. Here we are not aware of anything. It's like you have slept. You are not aware of anything. You just wake up and say, hey, I'm alive. Here we are going back into the Godhead with self-consciousness and also spiritual powers. Also with spiritual powers. Not to abuse, but to use them to support creation. In fact, when we even destroy the environment, we should know that we are not supporting the work of God. We are destroying his creation. So the task of human mm. humanity now is about going back to God. And to go back to God, we are required to have what we call self-mastery. Self-mastery. That's why we have the four bodies. We have the physical body. We have the etheric body or the vital body. We have the desire body. And then we have the mind. All these bodies are being used by the spirit in this physical world in order to gather experience and improve upon itself. It then means that, depending on your level, if you continue to rely on external entities, you are making a big mistake. Hmm. Because a time will come, based on your self-mastery, mastery, you are going to build your spiritual body. Our Lord Jesus Christ came to restore us so that we can build our spiritual body and go back to God. He has come to teach us how to overcome death. It is only the spiritual body that can overcome death. Of course, flesh and blood, as we are told, can never inherit the kingdom of God. 
So the next body that humanity is working on is what we call the vital body. I'll explain that one as well. The vital body comprises two higher eaters. You see, in the Garden of Eden, we were told about four rivers that ran, and the names were given. They represent the four eaters that hold this physical body. We have two lower and two higher. The two lower eaters support our physiological activities. When we eat, digestion takes place. We don't even know how it takes place. We fall asleep. We reproduce. The two lower eaters support that. But the two higher eaters, they are actually the spiritual body. They are the basis of our consciousness, our memory, and the things that we do. Indeed, the light we use is all coming from the higher eaters. It then means that the connection between the two lower eaters, which take care of this physical body, and the two higher eaters will one day break, depending on the life that you lead. And the life that must be led is mentioned clearly by our Lord Jesus Christ. The life that must be led. It is based on loving God, it is based on love, and it is based on selfless service. Those are the things that build the two higher eaters. Hatred, jealousy, ignorance, and what have you. They don't build those eaters. A time comes when the two lower eaters will separate from the two higher eaters. When they do so, you are born again. You have given birth to the spiritual body. That is what the task of humanity is. Because... No matter how long it takes, a day will come, and the Bible was very clear about that, that this earth planet will be transformed. The earth planet also has its bodies. The physical one is the one that we are using. It has the next body, which is the etheric one. It has the next one, which is the desire. It even has the next one, which is the mind. Because all that we do in terms of thinking and the rest is taken from this earth planet one. But when I talk about these bodies, they, don't, they are not like layers, one after the other. No. They are intermingled. So whatever one body does affects the other. Right now, as I speak, and you, li you listen, I use my mind to talk. But it is not the mind talking. It is the spirit talking. Everything we do, it is the spirit that does them. For instance, the highest aspect of the spirit lives here, about an inch below. Mm. Eh? The sinus. People know it. And then we have the second aspect, and we have the third aspect of the spirit. Now, it is the spirit that is doing all this gathering consciousness. So when these lower eaters separate from the two higher eaters, you become born again. It is there that you will know the real teachings of Christianity. That is actually where Christianity begins. We are only making progress towards that day, when this spiritual body will be born. And that is what we say separates esoteric, popular Christianity from esoteric, the spiritual Christianity. Often, many people do not follow the esoteric. One, they might not have heard of, about it before. Hmm. Second, if, if they hear, they say it's not scrip scriptural. Th that is more damaging. What is more scriptural than esoteric Christianity? Because it is not even a religion. Our Lord Jesus Christ is not for a select group of people. Christ is for the whole universe, is a universal owner. So if you think you, 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 you just mention his name, he loves you more than another person, that is not true. He can love you more if you are sep able to separate the higher it is from the lower it is. That is how it works. You have any other question you want to ask? I have plenty of questions, but I have a seat. Yes, I will. You said... Mm -hmm. Abusia, <laughs> you are watching the biggest and the largest. Me see, so when one came in soon, Obe came in asri. We treated this on spiritual hour. I did it two count the uh, uh, the uh, the spiral spinning. And then I made the apple only flowers. Ni example mau. The second week, then I made the three consciousness beyond metrics. Is this not it? People like this encourage me to move. Honestly, sometimes you hear this and you realize you are not actually mad and you are doing a great job. Just that fight, not quite to say, Mr. Alex, 
we me as a bona watch out or be run, we me and the corn, you bobu buni don't pay, but or Tarawa wo who kunu no. But who to me, Jew, who free in someone who says a bono or two apache? A busia? I say, me, you go so a hey, you. I want to mean compare someone with Kakoda. We are watching the biggest. Ain't you know, says he and eh, eh, this two types of Christianity. Ah, who can't say now, can Christ? No, be so say, hey, what can Bible, Nidia? What can Christ, Nidia? Ain't you who, who, who jumpy against no? Garden of Eden was just something on the sea, what just to describe as a more for you to understand. But a bit more reading with a garden of Eden is even in Ghana. They've brought it to. This is our problem. We keep learning and we keep delving into these things. Go and watch these two episodes we did um, uh, about this uh, co three consciousness beyond metrics and see if this is not the same thing this man is teaching. Anyways, the awa suno ontie eh yes my Bible say mungo kana semuno the obedi e dinu wankasi yam force you be ana papa no swedi kanya kan or say what types of people in this life into one message and so be other. We understand your pain and your struggle. But now, because esoteric Christianity is your topic, you've said two things, two Christianities, and two groups of Christianity. Yeah. Uh -huh. You said what and what? Esoteric and what? Esoteric and esoteric. You. Esoteric so, builds on esoteric. Without esoteric, there is no so esoteric. So explain which one is esoteric for people to understand or for us to understand. And then you come to esoteric and tell us the ones we, which one is the one that has major uh, people and the one that doesn't have major people and where we it will both will lead people to. I don't want to interact. That's why I've put the questions together. You get my question. I've got your question. Please continue. Mm -hmm. Esoteric Christianity builds on esoteric. Another word for esoteric is popular Christianity. Both have similarities and also dissimilarities. In esoteric Christianity, the teaching is more from outside. They look outside for guidance. There is nothing wrong about that. And the interpretation of scriptures is also word to word. As seen, that is how it is, because it is driven more by faith, as I said earlier on. It depends on the level of the individual. Unlike esoteric, esoteric, the person first must know the esoteric. If you don't know the story. Let's say class one. Yes. You have to move to class two. Exactly. The only danger is when you remain at that level. That's for me, that is all that there is. There is no any other one. That is where the danger is. So mm. esoteric confirms esoteric. But esoteric is actually the substance of Christianity, not the shadow. Hmm. It, because it talks more about what you must do to develop spiritually, not what you must do to be religious. No, 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 no. Esoteric goes beyond religiosity. To be religious, you go to church, uh, you listen to the sermon, you try to do the best as you can. That is how it goes with esoteric. But in esoteric, you are asking the questions to know more about yourself and your relationship with creation. You may say, God, there's nothing wrong with that. But in esoteric, since you are learning spiritual things, you will see that everything is one. There has to be no division among us because the spirit in us is from one source. There is no division there. So you love everybody. What is interesting about esoteric is that it tries to make you unfold your spiritual potentials through not only prayers, but through some other exercises as well. But the purpose of it is to support people, not to even use it for yourself. Because one of the laws is you cannot profit from any spiritual gift directly. It is there. So for instance, esoteric Christianity teaches people to do retrospection. Every evening before you sleep, you review the things that you have done during the day in order to judge yourself and also to praise yourself every evening so you review it in a reverse order hmm. 
in order to say, oh, I haven't done well here. Next time, I should strive not to do that again. So you are judging yourself every day. and self-repentance. Exactly. You are judging yourself every day. You are removing the dross in yourself to increase your consciousness. And it has effects on the eaters, as we said earlier on. And then esoteric also teaches you about concentration. Concentration sharpens the mind so that you can expand in your consciousness. It teaches you meditation as well and how to do it effectively. These things are not normally taught in open Christianity. But that is the actual journey. That's the actual business. Of course. That is the actual business because if you are judging yourself every day and you are purifying the bodies, the spiritual bodies, you are loving more and you are offering service more, it is having an effect on the spiritual body. There is one thing I need to mention here, that if we get to the third body, which is the desire body, which is also linked to the desire world of this earth planet, we pick everything from there. Hmm. If you don't live the noble desires, you operate in only the lower regions of the desire world. But when you don't have hatred in you, you don't have jealousy, you don't have selfishness, you don't steal and all that, you are purifying your body so that you can operate in the higher desire world. As I mentioned, these things are interlinked. So whatever you do, whether good or bad, affects the other. Just add this one. When you do this or you get into this practice, you judge yourself. It's yes. like pruning your own self. You're right. It helps you to do away with fake life. When you see people, you have different life. Yes. In your room, you feel nobody will see you. It makes you comfortable to do whatever you are doing. Yeah. But Dex practice will deal with you in your own bed where you know yourself. You're right. So add that. That is perfect. <laughs> the essence of retrospection is for you to judge yourself and reform. Until you judge yourself and reform, don't be expecting any forgiveness from anybody. You have to forgive yourself first. So by you judging stay yourself. away with it. You do away with those kind of behaviors. Exactly. Once you do away with those bad, negative actions, thoughts, and words, you are purifying your higher spiritual bodies. And a time will come, definitely, the two higher eaters will separate from the two lower eaters for you to be born again spiritually then you will know the essence of life. For now, we are only talking. Because we are in the mm. physical world, we tend to see things and talk about things physically. But the higher worlds, which have higher vibrations, are more or less higher than this physical one. And our home is not this physical one. The spirit descended from higher worlds. That is why it is important for us to do good so that we can go back on a more transformed and better form. So we go and blend yes. with our reactions. Am I correct? Yes. <laughs> you are watching the biggest and the largest. You know we are the mother of all spiritual platform. I, I don't know what you want, but you can actually exit the gate if you feel you are not comfortable here. Because your attack, no, 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 and just quick now bouncing back to your mama so pain into a how who be baby sa na at this level no baby a year drew no uh huh this one no ebusia se mo se yen fa obimbra life i want you to uh put it in these two boxes okay there is life section e wo ho e no power ne ye mo dia e na yen fa obimbra again and also can be pre recording to say, Yeah, 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 ma we, and also so ho. Intimate Pamucho suggests that no more throw or more into Momo Power no a go into these two sessions, either life or second chance. Taya Munyan is straight, and mammy, because yeah, 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 didn't panic bar. Now, the Akane, your Momo decision, na platform no, at the age, man, to more try, say, a life session, and a much bring him life. Give him second chance. Eya mo dia inti eya mo shana mo ye ni ye inti papa i si yafa nimbra life a montro wa comment session was a second chance so an pamucho montro e wa comment session on pesa mo ye ni pane permanent so a montro e wa comment session wa dia kani ya mo dia ye introducing crofone mamoa mo ena mo ye dia kani na because 
platform ni ye yin yina ye di anti di ye pe eni ye yen wosu me kai se ye ye episode bi ye posti ya na viewers na kasa se yen take it show ni down immediately ena ye ye this tell you how a uh, won so so wo impact ana wo comment ana wo view ana wo opinion e ye very important e wo platform we so eno na ma wo ye part of the platform you are watching the biggest and the largest love love and hate hate is our slogan if this is not the truth bring the truth another slogan that has also hit the platform in tcc i know our time no is almost so right now i want you to do this so we know we see if you can come and continue because it's too huge for you to finish now yeah. we have five minutes this five minutes don't worry the platform is always here this five minutes i want you to explain to us the one which of this Christianity do you see Ghanaians or Africans practicing? And the, what it will bring upon as the benefits, whether it will take us to the reason why we are here or we are wasting our time. That is one. Which one are we doing here? When you compare these two, tell us. Um, Usha, quantity bang, any a woe crumua, and nuntina yabra bo, any ye behaviors, ni everything, the country is looking like this. If we can get, maybe we have 80% of this part, the reason we are like this. If we can get 50% of this esoteric, this is how the country will look like. You get me? Use this analysis to finish this episode, and let's see if the people will give you more chances to come. Okay. Um to a very large extent, um, esoteric Christianity is being practiced more. Um, it's not that people are not ready for the esoteric. People are ready for the esoteric. What matters is to make the information available to them, that there is something beyond what they have now. When people come into touch with the esoteric, they will rediscover themselves and say, that, ah, so we are spirits, and we are supposed to do this. Now, not many people know that all of us who are here on this earth planet have ever been here before and will ever be here in the future depending on the work that we do now. Uh, I need to also mention that even though I say esoteric dominates, it doesn't mean that there are people who have no knowledge about the esoteric. There are many people, even pastors, reverend ministers and fathers, but it depends on the level of preparedness of the people to receive those teachings. I know for today, indeed, I have said certain things that people say, oh, this is not correct. It is, it is just one of those things. But the future of humanity mm. is esoteric Christianity. Why am I saying every time esoteric Christianity? Because it is universal and it is for all of us. It has nothing to do with whether you claim you are a Christian, you are this, you are that, you are that, no. Be all humanity is fostered by our Lord Jesus Christ. And his dominion, when he comes over again, is based on that spiritual body. It is only when we move into the, that spiritual body that we can indeed be with him when he comes back again. Because he's never coming back in this physical body. Our Lord Jesus Christ will never come back in this physical body. He will come back in the, with the etheric body. And if we want to meet him in the etheric body, we need to develop it. There is no time to waste. We need to love some more. We need to be good to one another. We need to love exceedingly. And we don't need to put our ourselves at the center of things. Let us put our neighbor at the center of things. Let us create opportunities for people. When we do that, then we are making progress. But let me also mention that until we follow the law, you see, if you say you are a Christian, you cannot even follow the law. How can you do what law? What higher? law? What the law? The Ten Commandments is basic to every religion. Call it Africa tradition, call it Jewish, call it whatever. The Ten Commandments have been given by God Jehovah to tame our desires, our wrong desires, so that we can purify our body for our Lord Jesus Christ. So if we do not even follow the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not steal. It is clear over there and we still and ask for forgiveness, we are forgiven. The next time we go and do it again, then we are not making any progress. So let us follow the law 
and let us know that the Lord leads to love, which is Christ. Mm, I me, mean, I have one million questions for him. I didn't finish my question, so everything he said has a question. Yes. But the time is also here. If you people put him on set again, I will take advantage and ask my own questions. But I will ask him a last one. What, this one, I can't swallow it. So you yourself right now. Yes. Where do you belong? Is it, uh, is it consciousness mixed with confusion or what? Because, Cecilia, now, no, esoteric, 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 and consciousness. And then getting back to the creator. Where do you belong? You yourself, where do you belong right now? Uh, let me mention that I said, Jenny, mm -hmm. we haven't reached that end point. So yet. where are you now? I am striving to make myself better. So you are in class what? Oh, I cannot grade myself in terms of classes. Okay. But what I can say <laughs> is that, <laughs> what I can say is that uh -huh. I always give thanks to God. Mm -hmm. that I come across esoteric teaching that is telling me who am I? That is telling me that this is your spiritual nature. That is telling me this is what you have to do consciously, not try and error. Hmm. Consciously, in order to purify your spiritual bodies. And to purify the spiritual bodies, the basis is to love. So every time I imagine, I think of where is the opportunity so that I can love some more. Not love for the safe, sake of selfishness. To not, love to make somebody love better. For the sake of selfishness. He said a whole lot that needs one million questions. Yes. So Jesus is your mentor. Of course. Not God. The ultimate is God. I know. I understand. So Jesus is your mentor. Yes. He's not God. You said earlier yes, that he's not said anywhere yeah. that he is God. Exactly. And this esoteric people are saying Jesus is God. You have one million questions to answer for me. I'm but ready. our time is due. Ebushia. Young fan in bra life at your comment session, or if young fan in bra the second one, so I made a sound in the Obeke Bia Namedia tomb by myself. I have one million questions for him. One, why he said Jesus is a uh, uh, nobody, no, a uh, being bad that he's no Sanso Cancer or no pet or no pony or no the kind in by we are sick. And also another thing he has to understand. And Jesus, or a human being, according to him, he needs to explain all these things. He, need, he even needs to explain the Christ. Yes. Now all can yes. uh, that he is the second command, of the creator. He needs to explain all these things. By a time, no, I a big please kindly throw him in the in the other life or whichever way you throw him. So I will also get advantage to ask him more questions. Abusia, we ask more questions. Because or he just said that if you are practicing esoteric, you ask more questions. Yeah. Because you want to do things that we are convinced so you don't throw your life away. Daddy, thank you so much. We do appreciate your uh, knowledge and your presence on this set. So before we go, your last uh, advice, your last words to the public. And when you are done, you can add... Um, your social media handles and all for people to reach out. Maybe people would want to ask you one-on-one -on -one questions. So your last words, your advice to those who are practicing esoteric and how you will make people dumb. Hey. Please, your last words. Friends, Christianity is a big thing. Let us not think we are there yet. Let us try to know so that we can do better. Of course, we can do better. It is for that reason why our Lord Jesus Christ came, because he knew we could do better. If you want to email me, you can do so. Seboko at life.com. I will spell it. Seboko is S-E-B-O-K-O-R at live. Live is L-I-V-E dot com. There is a lot more to talk about. Okay. So much. Because I've taken about 30 years to learn all this. Hope to be with you again. Okay. If hope to be with you again, the, the rest is up to you to decide. Oh, Abusia, I am a esoteric Christian and an esoteric Christian. And I who call ICGC and I will go to your tight. Who call lighthouse now? Go to your tight. Poor brother, poor one cancer. I don't know if we are soon here. No, 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 no,
they look alike. The difference is that the vulture is a scavenger. He eats from the trash. The eagle eats fresh uh, blood and also eats honey from the rocks, not honey from a tree. That's the difference between me and you.